Hi, today I wanted to talk about one of the apps that we've got, which is called QU Objects. This application allows you to create um, object storage, which is storage within your NAS that does something else that can be connected to in a different way than regular file shares. Um, Veeam is taking advantage of this within their software by using their immutability feature. So basically backups that can't be changed once you've set a period. So if you say, I want the, the data in this backup to be locked for 30 days, no matter who's got rights to change it, you can set that. Um, so our QNAP QU Objects application, which is free and runs on most of our NAS, both of our operating systems of QTS and QUTS Hero, um, is uh, certified for object with immutability, which means you can use it as object storage within Veeam for a backup repository that supports their immutability feature. Um, so here's the certification page up on their website. So they tell you how they tested it, what operating system, things like that. Um, I'm going to test it on a, a TS-H1290FX uh, that's running um, QUTS Hero. Um, largely, it's the same as setting it up with QTS. I'll show you the one bit that's different throughout the demo, but that's where I'll show you. Um, I have it set up here just in a small little single host VMware environment. So I've got uh, Windows Server 2019. That's where Veeam's running. Uh, and I'll back up the Windows 10 VM with it once uh, I show you how it all works and how it all gets connected. Uh, so here is the Windows Server 2019 uh, virtual machine that I'm just logged into here, just an eval version. This will do for what we're doing. Here's the TSH1290FX, and I've got QU objects installed on it. Uh, so I'll go through the, the full setup um, of how to get it working. So first and foremost, it's kind of in the same order you see the list on the left there. Uh, so overview here just gives you some information about uh, what's happening when you've got it running. Um, user management, this is where you'd add your users. So I've already added the user. Um, so I've added the uh, the Craig user. There's the other users that are available. So I only need the Craig user. Uh, I'm going to go down to storage space and I'm going to create a storage space for my Veeam backups with immutability. Um, so here I'm going to go create. Um, this is where you've got to give it a name. So I don't know, I'll just call it QU objects. Be nice and imaginative. Uh, pick the storage pool. I've got one, so I'm just going to put it in that one. Um, I'll set the refresh down to every six hours just to get more up-to-date status on it. Um, and here, this is where it's slightly different between uh, QUTS Hero and QTS. So QTS does not have the worm feature, which is uh, write once, read many. Uh, QUTS Hero does. So on QUTS Hero, you do have to select that. I would recommend if you're using this in production to choose the compliance option. Um, for my demo, I'm going to choose the enterprise option because that means um, I can go and delete the storage space later. Um, not the data within it if I wanted to be selective, but enterprise does let me have a play around in a test mode. So anybody that wants to have a play in a test, use enterprise. Uh, if you use compliance, the only way to delete it is to effectively delete the whole pool that it's within. So that's the only difference between the two. Uh, so I am going to choose um, the uh, the enterprise one for this. There is a bit of a uh, explanation there as to what, what each one is. So, But I'll choose enterprise for this. I'm going to tick, uh, Craig has permission to access this. So that's the me, the user that's going to be using it. And I'm going to click create. So I'll click OK. It says you can't change worm settings after the fact. Yep, no problem. OK, so that's now created um, a storage space uh, within it. So you can even see that storage space. If you go to the storage and snapshots window, um, it's also reflected there. So we should see a, a QU objects one there. And it's got the worm labeling next to it because I have enabled it for worm. So what I'll do next is I'll come down the list to the next one. I'll go to buckets. Now this time you've got to change your storage space at the top. So I'm going to change it to the one I just created, which is QU objects. And I'm going to create a, a bucket in here. So you can call it a, I don't know, I'll call it a Veeam 30 days, because I'll set it for a 30 day uh, backup, something like that. Uh, so here's all the different options. So the only thing you do need to change here is object lock, lock at the bottom it does need to be set to enabled. Um, I'm going to leave um, all the other options as uh, largely default. I might tick the bottom one. I'll tick that one. Um, but I'll leave everything else as default. I'm not going to change these number of days to retain and things like that. Those are settings that you'll pick within Veeam once you add it to Veeam itself. So I'm going to click Create. Click OK. And that's now going to create me a bucket. Uh, so if I was to now go into Veeam, um, it's going to need some information. So if I come across here, I've gone to uh, my backup infrastructure within Veeam. Make that bigger backup infrastructure. Um, I'm in the backup repository section, so I'm just going to right click 
within this area and go add a backup repository. I'm going to choose object storage at the bottom because we're using the QU objects application. And I'm going to choose S3 compatible, which is what we need uh, to interact uh, with QU objects. So I'll choose the S3 uh, one at the top. So the top here, I'll call it the name is TS-H1290FX because that's the NAS I'm using. Click Next. So now it's asking for the service point. So for this, I'm going to go back over here and go to server settings. And I see the service endpoint here. So I'm going to just click that. And it's going to copy that endpoint into my clipboard. So now I can come back over here and paste that. Uh, US East 1, I'm just going to leave that. doesn't matter. Um, now it wants credentials. So if I click Add, it wants an access key and a secret key. So again, I'll go back to QU Objects. I'm going to go to User Management this time. And I'll click on Add Key. So now I've got a key here. So I'm going to select the key. So if you come here, you can click Copy, and it'll open up a window. It's asking which storage space. So I'm going to use the QU Objects one I've created. Um, and here's all the different information you've got. So Access Key is the one I want. So I'm going to copy Access Key. Go back to Veeam. I'm going to paste that one. Now, next, it wants the secret key. So I'll go back to QU Objects, copy the secret key. I'm doing this for the S3 ones, not the OpenStack ones at the bottom. I'm going to paste that. I'll say um, key for QU uh, Objects on TSH1290FX, just in case I'm adding any more later. I know what those credentials are for. So I'm going to click OK. Uh, you can choose your connection mode if you've got different gateways, things like that. You can set those up. I'm just going to leave it on direct. Click Next. Um, this is just because I'm self-certifying my own certificate, so I'm just going to click Continue. Um, now it wants the bucket. So now we've put the correct credentials in, endpoints, uh, IP addresses, things like that. Um, it can see the bucket. So here I see I've got the Veeam 30 days uh, that I created within QU Objects. So that's populated. Uh, and now it wants a folder. Uh, so within the folder, I'll maybe create a new one and I'll call it uh, Backup. So we'll choose that one. That's a folder I'm going to use. So here's the option within Veeam to make it immutable. So down here, we've got an option to make recent backups immutable. I'm going to leave it for 30 days. Um, if you had not set up QU objects correct at this point, when you click Next here, you will get a warning message saying that the uh, storage destination is not compatible with it. So if this goes through, you know you've set it correct, which it has, so that's good. I'm going to leave all these default. Click Next. I'm happy with that. I don't have any existing backups. I've just created it, so I don't need to tick that. Click Apply. Um, hopefully, this won't take too long. It's just going to run through all the different settings, make sure it's all created, and then it can be added as a repository successfully. OK, so now it's going to let me. It says it's been saved successfully, so click Next. Just a summary. Very happy with that. Um, everything looking good, so no problem. Click Finish. Uh, so now I've got the, the the storage repository created, which was effectively a bucket from my QU Objects application. That's all been created there, uh, so I'm happy with that. So now the job is uh, to go and make a new job for this backup target. So if I click onto Home, um, I'm going to say I'm in the Job section now. So I'll go Backup. Um, Let's say virtual machine. I've got a virtual machine to back up here. Um, so name backup job one. So I'll say uh, Win 10 uh, backup 30 days, maybe. There we go. Click next. It's got, wants to add the machine. So I'm just going to have a look at my VMware environment here. I'm going to pick the Windows 10 machine. Click add. Happy with that. Click next. Uh, so here, uh, retention policy is going to ask me, but first I have to change the backup repository. So it selected the onboard one created by Veeam. So I'm going to change to the TSH1290FX, which is where I've got the immutable storage. I'm going to change that backup retention to 30 days to match uh, the immutability. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm going to click Next. I don't need to change any of those for this. Run job automatically. Sure, run it every night. That's fine. Click Apply and say run the job when I click finish. So that's now effectively going to go off, run that backup to the um, immutable storage. Uh, whilst this backup's running, uh, you can go check the NAS for performance statistics, things like that. So if I was to come over here, I can click on the dashboard on the NAS, for example, uh, and it's going to show me different information. So if I click into the resource monitor, 
we'll be able to see the network usage start to ramp up over time here as it's doing the backup. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to start taking in data of that Windows 10 virtual machine. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that run. Um, I'll stay quiet while it's doing that. So let me click on it so we can see the statistics as it starts popping up. Um, so as it's processing that and getting that ready to start doing a copy, we'll let that run. And uh, then I'll come back and uh, I'll show you how it all looks once it's been, once it's been done and uh, copied to the NAS. Okay, so that's complete. So that took about four minutes to back that up. Um, so that's now done the backup, it says stop, last result was a success. So if we come over to the uh, the NAS and have a look, so we can see that there was the, the backup happening, everything's good, that's brilliant. If we come back into QU objects and go to the overview, if we sort of compress this statistic data, we can go down to say, oops, sorry, the last hour, see a spike in data usage that's being used. So that's good, it's actually worked, data transfer happened. Um, now let's go see what it looks like. So if I go to the bucket, I'm in the QU objects one that's there. Let me refresh that. <clears throat> Got the Veeam 30 days option that's there. Um, so we can see that now that size is now 27 gigs. So it's copied in all that data to it. Um, I can actually go look at that in file station. So I can do a little pop out here to go have a look at that data. So the Veeam 30 days in the Veeam folder I created. Um, I've got the backup in here. <clears throat> So go through see all the data. So I've got the backup itself. So I've got the option here to do anything I want to it. So I could come all the way up to the root folder if I wanted a Veeam 30 days. Let's say I, I take the box go right click and go um, delete on that data, delete permanently, click OK, please go. Um, so it's going to do that and it's going to complete. So you might think it's actually gone. You think the data's actually disappeared, but the data hasn't disappeared. It's just from the file structure here. Um, but if we were to go back into QU objects, uh, you can actually navigate within the bucket um, of the uh, of the object explorer here. So if I go here, change the option down to QU objects. <clears throat> so we've got the bucket for VM 30 days, so that's fine. Now it looks like the data's gone because it's empty, but if I go show version ID over here, we can see that the data's still there. Uh, so the, Veeam, the way Veeam's storing the data, it's using version IDs, and the version IDs are hidden from the file structure. So all the data um, was is still actually there. Sorry, I went down the wrong level. So if I go to backup, backup, clients, you know, the data is all still there. So everything that was backed up is still within the backup job. It is still there. So even though it doesn't look like it's there, um, on the main view, it is actually still there. Um, so, you know, if I was to come here and go refresh on this page, um, it is still empty, it's not there. But if I was to go back to Veeam, just show you the uh, the one last thing, I'm gonna run the backup one more time um, and it should um, effectively replenish the, uh, the backup information that's on that main screen. But the data never went anywhere. You could still see it, Veeam can still see it, it's still there within uh, QU objects as well. So Worm has protected it effectively using the object lock function within QU objects. Uh, so we'll just let this one run and then we'll go refresh the page again. Okay, so that's the uh, the second one backed up. So just to prove the data was still there, that backup only took 1 minute 20 seconds and a lot of that's just processing the virtual machine, checking to see if there's anything changed. Um, but it was an incremental backup. It wasn't a, a fresh backup because I deleted the data. Um, it only took one minute 20 instead of the four minutes it took before. Uh, so if we were to go back over here, I click refresh on the data, we can see it's back now. So, but again, even if we were to go and delete this, this sort of root folder again, if we, if we right click and just do the exact same thing we did before, delete it permanently so that it's definitely not showing in the view. <clears throat> Okay, so that's completed. So if, even if we refresh the page, it looks like it's gone. So if we go across to QU objects again, um, I'm going to go to the bucket. I'm going to refresh the bucket. 
Um, the data is definitely not gone. We can see that it's all still there. So if I was to go here and try to remove that, so I'm going to get rid of that bucket. It says you can't. There's there's data. You must go to file station to remove the data from the, the shared folder. But if I go to file station, there is no data. Um, but obviously there is data as I showed you earlier. So again, if we go to Object Explorer, we've got the version ID um, enabled. So here, if I just refresh that, um, so here we've still got the, the option here, we've still got the backup, everything is still there. Um, it's just within a version ID and the version IDs cannot be deleted, they're completely protected uh, with the object lock function within QU objects that Veeam is utilizing. Um, so that's um, effectively how to fully configure it um, on both QTS Hero as well as QTS. I say QTS just had the one slight change where you don't select worm, um, but you do have to still select object lock uh, when creating the bucket on the next page. Um, but other than that, the process would be very similar between the two. Um, it is, it's fully certified by Veeam as well, so that's good. Um, but this is uh, Veeam backup and replication using their immutability feature. Um, it really will work on any of our NAS that can install QU objects. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, please do let me know in the comments section down below, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, thanks a lot.